Can you recommend some pens with especially grippy grip sections, like with knurling or made of materials with a lot of traction? My hands get tired bearing down on slippery pens. Uh, for sure. So let's talk a little bit about slippery pens or pen grips, I guess. Um, there's a couple of different ways uh, that you can achieve this. One of them is mechanical. So um, either like with the texture of the pen or the form, the shape of the grip, um, or you can have the material, uh, which is like the actual substance that it's made of. Think of like a rubber grip versus a slick metal grip. Um, all other factors, you can have kind of one or the other or a combination of both that can determine how grippy a pen actually is. And everybody's got different tastes, right? We all have different finger sizes. We all have different, you know, Rachel holds her pens with four fingers. I hold mine with three. I have very oily hands. So, you know, slick metal grips are slippery for me and hard to hold. Other people, it doesn't really matter. They write their pens for three words at a time and they're fine with whatever. Other people like to write for two hours at a time and they need something super comfortable and very grippy even when you are like sweaty and oily and all that kind of stuff. So it really depends on a lot of different factors, but I think I can pretty much lump them into two separate buckets. It's either a mechanical texture based or a kind of material base um, that affects the grippiness the most. Um, so thinking about like the mechanical or the texture based ones, you've got uh, like you can have like a matte finish to it that can just give you a little more surface area, a little more friction. That's one way you can achieve it. Um, you can have knurling, kind of like what you said there, um, you know, some kind of like specific like grooves or something like that into it. Um, you can have the shape of it, like a finger form, thinking about like a Lamy Safari or something of that triangular grip. Uh, or you can have some kind of like cross hatching or, or some other kind of, you know, cutting into the thing. I guess that could kind of be lumped under knurling, but, um, you know, pens specifically that have this kind of, you know, texture to it. Um, you know, Lamy 2000 is one that comes to mind as far as like a matte finish or a brushed finish. Um, this one specifically, it's not so much like front to back because it's, it's, it's not so much a matte finish, this is more of a brushed finish. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so I can show you some of these grips because I think the texture, uh, close-up texture is gonna matter for this. So this one, you can see it's got a brush thing and they actually take like sandpaper basically and you know, just sand down the pens. So this one, uh, you know, going this way, front to back on the pen, it's pretty slick. But side to side, that's where you're gonna get most of your grip. Um, so depending, you know, it's like that may or may not work uh, ideally for some, but that's an example of kind of that matte texture. Um, thinking about another one, like if you have a um, Lamy CP1, right? Like it's got kind of this ribbed, it's plastic, you know, so it's kind of middle of the road in terms of its grippiness, but the fact that it's got these, this knurling here, that's really going to give you good uh, kind of front to back uh, texture uh, and, and keep it grippier in your hand. So that's an example of that. Thinking about, uh, this one's got kind of a uh, combination here. This is the uh, Jin Hao. This is the X450. And uh, this one has somewhat of a triangular. It's got kind of an indentation of triangular and it has grooves in there. So it's got kind of two things going for you to help give you a solid grip on that one. And then of course the kind of iconic Lamy Safari. Uh, this one has a very distinct triangular grip that helps uh, to do it as well as you know, the grip kind of tapers and then flares out at the end. So it kind of keeps it from uh, your fingers from slipping off on the end there. So a couple of different ways. And actually this one is a matte finish too. And then, you know, just some examples of other ones. I'm gonna keep going because I got a bunch of these. Um, the Pilot's Plumix has the same kind of thing, triangular grip, um, not as pronounced maybe necessarily as the Lamy, but still there. Pilot Kakuno is the same way, a little more subtle there, but definitely has a triangular thing. A lot of times pens that are marketed towards children, um, you know, which like the Kakuno kind of is, the Pelican Twist definitely is. This is a crazy looking pen, isn't it? It's, a tr it's an actual triangular pen that like twists and stuff, so pretty wild. Um, but that one, that's got kind of both actually. This has kind of a rubbery grip as well, as well as kind of the mechanical. Uh, design aspect to it. So that's some examples right there. Thinking specifically about materials now, um, you know, anything that's grippy or kind of hygroscopic, right? Which means that it absorbs uh, moisture. Uh, you know, the, the twist is actually a good kind of segue to get into that because it's, it's both. It's got the mechanical form as well as uh, kind of a rubbery grip to it. So that helps in a couple of different ways. Uh, going back to Lamy, Lamy has a lot of different grips actually on their pens. The Lamy Studio specifically in the stainless steel has a rubber grip. So even though it's uh, kind of a slick and tapered form, which the Studio, the other models of the Studio all have slick metal grips. So it's like some of the most challenging for people like me who have oily fingers, but the rubber one, this action is pretty good, which is why I have this 
uh, stainless steel one in my personal collection, and it just looks cool, right? Like, looks very shiny. Uh, okay, uh, ebonite pen. So like this one's a Conklin Classic. There you go, you can see it. So a Conklin Classic. This is an ebonite pen, and uh, the grip itself is made of ebonite. So ebonite is a hygroscopic material, which means that it's uh, it can absorb moisture to a degree. So it's really good, especially for hand oils. Um, a lot of people enjoy ebonite pens uh, who like to write for long writing sessions because of that hygroscopic nature. So that's an example of one that's really good or like a Noodler's uh, ebonite pen. They have a couple different models that they make an ebonite. This is an ebonite Conrad. And uh, it's got kind of the same thing going on. It's got an ebonite grip that uh, can be good. Now granted, if you're writing with a flex pen, not necessarily the most enjoyable thing for long writing sessions, but still gives you a little bit better sense of grip. Um, and then a couple different materials. This one, you probably haven't seen this pen uh, in a while if you have ever. This is the Delta uh, Magnifica Amalfi. So this is a pretty crazy looking pen. I don't know, some people think it looks crazy and ugly, but I actually really love this pen, which is why I got one personally. Um, but this uh, has celluloid. So celluloid, it looks kind of like plastic, you know, it's a form of resin, but it is a cellulosic material, it's a natural-based natural material as opposed to just straight up like petroleum plastic. Um, and so it actually has uh, somewhat more of a grip to it than just straight up plastic. So it's not as grippy as ebonite, but it does have a little more grip to it. So celluloid is, it takes forever to form. It's an expensive material to make, but it does have those hygroscopic properties. So if you happen to find a pen that has a, a, a um, uh, celluloid material or something like the uh, rest in peace Omos, um, this is the Ojiva, the Ojiva Alba, uh, is a kind of a mixture. So Omos and Aurora, uh, you know, they call theirs Aurora Lloyd, Omos uh, called theirs, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, it was a um, uh, basically kind of a, a blend of acrylic uh, um, uh, acetate, I believe it was, and um, celluloid. So acro acroloid? No, I can't remember. Um, a couple different companies like Visconti, Aurora, Omos, they have blends that are kind of like between celluloid and resin. So you get a little bit more of a grip uh, on these types of pens as well uh, that can, that can you know, be a factor. And then uh, last one that I have is uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens. And there's, there's gonna be other pens. This is not an exhaustive list. I'm just trying to give you some examples. Um, but uh, the Homo Sapiens is uh, volcanic resin. So it's uh, same kind of thing. Like you're getting some hygroscopic properties of this, just like you would have uh, with ebonite. This feels a lot like ebonite. It's a little denser, a little harder, you know, heavier. Um, but the material itself feels a lot like ebonite. And uh, mine is actually kind of nice and shiny now because it's I've used it so long. I've been in my daily carry for almost two years, basically, um, that it's, uh, it's worked out uh, pretty well. And I've shined it up a little bit just from handling it so much.